Hey everybody, it's Greg with our Kickoff Concepts Game Breakdown uh, video here. So, uh, one of the first things to do uh, on a kickoff day is to unpack the game in a lot of different ways. Um, as a 20 plus year uh, mentor uh, and person involved in first, um, the way that I always like to approach the game is really in a couple phases. One is understanding the game elements themselves, their scoring values, and then taking a look at opportunities uh, on the field really boiling down to points per second. Uh, since every first game has a time durational period of it, you want to make sure that you're doing things on the field that are the most points you can get given the time duration. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So the cones themselves are really great game pieces this year. Um, and uh, each alliance has 30 of them at their disposal. So you'll have 20 in your human player that includes the preload, but also 10 on the field that your robot can pick up. Um, the other scoring object or scoring place that you're going to have to worry about is uh, the junctions, right? So the junctions are uh, the ground junction, which is this um, small disc here on the field. It's basically, um, for lack of a better way to say it, a coaster for the cone. Um, but that's very, very ground level. And then you have different heights. You've got this low junction, which you can see is uh, springy, but uh, pretty, pretty there. And then you've got the medium junction, which is a little bit longer. And then we didn't even have room here in our video setup, but you've got the high junction, also the lightsaber of the season. So these are all increments of each other, so they, they stack up. So um, you're going to have to figure out how to score on these different ones. Um, as I said, I like to start uh, with points. Points is always kind of the, the first place. So um, in the game manual this year, um, I really I always look at the, uh, the scoring chart. Um, and so let's just talk through robot actions and what you can do here. So uh, navigating a robot, um, we'll talk about navigating in just a second um, and how autonomous works out here. But uh, let's just talk about points on these junctions because there's a couple different things going on here that I think it's really important to make sure we're all on the same page all at once. So first of all, uh, you get point values for placing your cones on different junctions, right? So uh, in autonomous or in uh, driver control, the point values for the actual cones in a specific spot are the same. So two points, three points, four points, and five points for the high one. Okay, so that's, that's the pretty good uh, primary. But here's a couple other things. So first of all is ownership, right? So this game also has a dynamic um, where ownership of a junction actually matters. So ownership is defined in the rules as the, one, the, the team that's got the highest uh, cone on that, uh, on that junction. So it's not just where the, where the cone is or that you've got them. You still get points for all the ones going up the, uh, the junction. But whoever's got that top one gets a little bit of uh, extra bonus point. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. Uh, we also have uh, the introduction this year again of uh, beacons, team beacons. We've seen these in past years. They've been called to different things, whether they're cappers or things like that. Um, but every team gets the ability to uh, build and bring their own beacon. And if your beacon is the the thing that's on the, the junction at the end um, during end game, um, you also get a bonus for that guy. So uh, pretty interesting game in terms of, of strategy here because if this singular cone on here is worth five points, but if it's the one that is owned causing you to own this tower, this one is actually worth eight points. And so that's a really interesting dynamic. So as you get towards the end of the game here, um, where you place your last cones on the field might actually have a pretty big impact on, you know, racking up those final points, especially if you're able to, you know, 
not only put the cone on, which is worth points, but also change possession. These are nice deltas because not only do you add the three points to your score, but you would also be removing three points from the other score. So while this cone itself is technically only worth eight, if it's the one that causes it, you actually have the ability to call that an 11 point or like a, a six point swing because you're removing three, adding three plus the five. So they still get the five for that one. So there's a really nice differential. And I think that teams are gonna have to break down that strategy, whether it makes sense to just fill a junction and just get as many points as you possibly can, or do you wanna go and place them in positions? Um, so moving, uh, talking specifically about that, um, the other thing that's going on here is uh, the building of circuits. And this is an incredibly cool game dynamic that uh, I don't know that any first game has seen. Um, and this is kind of building a connected line. If you've ever played the game Dots, uh, this is kind of what that, that kind of equates to. But what it means is each alliance having you get bonus points for building a uh, completed circuit at the end game. And so looking at the diagram here, um, you can see that a cone of the colors in the uh, corner terminals and then different pathways um, on the different junctions, um, creating a connected uh, terminal also gets you 20 points. So you can rack up those points. So going back again and saying that like with the cones being valued at different values for different heights, you know, they go from five points all the way down to two points, but you can quickly turn, you know, five or six cones into an additional 20 points. So you get the 20 points for a completed circuit, then you get the additional points for the ownership of that junction, then you get the additional points for the cones themselves. So while the game actually plays pretty straightforward in terms of you have a singular game object and your object of the game is to put those on the, the posts, there's a lot more going on here under the, under the scenes in terms of uh, where to place them, when to place them, when to take ownership, um, and, and things like that. So I think I'd recommend, uh, I'm sure by the time this video comes out, there will be a bunch of volunteers that have made awesome little calculators and stuff. Uh, if we find one of those, we'll, we'll post a link to it in our docs or the description of this video. But really play that game um, in terms of what your strategy is and how to optimize points because it may change based on which opponents you have, what their capabilities are, what your capabilities are. Um, unlike previous games where if you couldn't score in the high goal, uh, you were like, going to get blown out by the time you got to the uh, high levels, there's definitely room on the field here for robots that can score on the lows and mediums um, and place cones at will exactly where they are on the field. So I think we're going to end up seeing some very, very discreet robot designs where we might be talking about, you know, the small, fast, and nimble robots that that go wherever they go on the field and they can just put them wherever. And then you may see robots that are just gonna focus on as fast as they can trying to score all 30 of their alliance's cones during, the, during that uh, period. And then you may see a lot of hybrid. Uh, so it's gonna be really, really interesting. Um, other, other interesting, unique points about this game um, as we look through, uh, let's, let's go back to uh, Autonomous here for a second. Um, uh, on every field, each alliance has a, uh, a signal, um, and a signal is not a scorable element. Um, very similarly to uh, previous years where there's like a dice roll or the duck placed in a specific spot or, or the balls or, um, to try to figure out like what you need to do in autonomous, this is the same thing. So um, which side of this is facing um, your starting robot will dictate um, where you might want to park at the end of the autonomous period. So obviously you can score cones during the autonomous period, but if a robot is parked in the location that corresponds to this signal, uh, you're also gonna get some bonus points. And you know, 
as you're looking at this, um, and if, especially if you're a new team and you're not sure exactly how to build a giant lift to score um, a cone on this colossal tower, you know, remember, doing autonomous actions where you can figure out, oh, I need to drive from where I started. If, like, if you're starting on tile F2 to location 1, 2, or 3 at the end of autonomous, that's a really achievable, pretty straightforward goal. It does require some sensors, some computer vision, some, some thinking about how you're going to approach this. But um, an easy task for your programmers to start might be figure out how to drive your robot forward, right? And then figure out how to move to all three locations. Because if you have a routine that can drive to all three locations, then you can figure out how to detect this and you can get some pretty good points for your alliance. So um, that's going to be a pretty uh, good, uh, a good start to the autonomous. Uh, I will say in kind of looking at this game, um, it, is, it is deceptively complicated in the strategic nature of where you score. But in terms of, you know, the what robot do I build, um, you know, figuring out how to pick these up, um, I think that teams are going to have to figure out how to pick them up from the side. If they fall over, uh, if they get knocked over, things like that, that's going to be one of those interesting challenges to address. Um, uh, figuring out how to uh, go up to the different heights is going to be an interesting challenge that you're going to have to figure out. And then also, um, remember, this is a field, um, if we look at the diagram here, um, that any robot can score on any one of these um, junctions. And so there's going to be potentially um, a lot of movement. And these field tiles are two foot by two foot. Um, and your robot size constraint is uh, 18 inches by 18 inches to start. So effectively, in between these, in these junctions, you're only going to have room for that one robot. Um, and that introduces some interesting things. If you're trying to get to a certain junction and there's a robot in your way, um, driving all the way over from your side to the other, other side of the field, there might be some considerations about drivetrain maneuverability. Um, and then if you're going to build an arm or an elevator or whatever your scoring mechanism is, how that gets big and outside your robot, you've got a lot of things to, uh, it's a very crowded field. Um, inevitably. So you're going to have to consider not just how you're scoring, how you're picking this up, how you're putting them on and where they go, but also um, how you're going to maneuver through this field. Um, and so all of those are things that you should kind of take a look at as you break down the game. But, you know, I think the biggest thing here is understanding what your strategy is going to be, whether it's going to be to load one or a certain number of junctions that are close by so you can maximize the number of cones that you score, or if you're going to strategically go for the circuit, um, or if you're just going to play spoiler where you want to make sure that the opponent doesn't get a circuit um, and you want those ownership points. All of those things are going to play into it. Um, the good news is that robots that can score effectively can play all of those different strategies but you need to recognize very quickly what type of strategies um, you will see in the competition. And I think they will change based on who your alliance partner is and who you're going up against. So that's my uh, brief game breakdown. Power Play looks like it's a really exciting game. Uh, stay tuned for uh, more of the Rev Kickoff Concept Series, and uh, we'll see you soon.